Federal Western Cape Premier Alan Windy has reshuffled his provincial cabinet following the resignation of Education MEC Debbie Schaefer. Schaefer will be taking an offer in the UK. Windy announced changes to the configuration of various departments like human settlements, community safety and transport. Uh, let's take this discussion further. We're now joined uh, via Zoom by uh, Provincial Democratic Alliance leader Tertius Simmers and newly appointed Infrastructure MEC. A very good afternoon to you and thanks so very much for joining us here on SABC News. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon to all your viewers. Well, uh, you've just been appointed uh, Infrastructure MEC, I suppose. Congratulations in order there in the Western Cape. Talk to us about some of your plans going forward uh, that you have for the department. I mean, you know, a lot going on in the province at the moment. Just recently, you would have seen those uh, fires in Langan. I'm not sure if that falls uh, directly within, you know, your portfolio. But certainly uh, some of the things that you'll have to be looking at. Well, indeed, remember that the new Department of Infrastructure incorporates uh, human settlements, which was my former portfolio, because I was called the Provincial Minister of Human Settlements. Yeah. It incorporates aspects of, of uh, the uh, public works component, but also of the roads component, which means, you know, what I've been dealing with in terms of human settlements, which is a component of infrastructure development throughout our province, has now just been expanded by virtue of this new portfolio because we do believe that infrastructure in partnership with all three spheres of government and also the private sector will help us now unlock the future uh, value of the provincial infrastructure uh, uh, across our province, but also ultimately to contribute together with the private sector that we can create sustainable job opportunities into the future for all residents across the Western Cape. Uh which is ultimately what my focus is going to be, but also to ensure that through further innovation that we now expand on the, the, the value proposal, which we have been set out as a cabinet since 2019. And we now look forward to, to 2024 and beyond, uh, given once this new uh, department uh, goes live, uh, as the Premier said this morning, on the 1st of April 2023, it will have its own budget. Yeah. And by then, we'll have clear plans in, uh, in process. Uh, speaking of, of, of budgets, uh, Mr. Simmers, uh, access to, to proper housing remains obviously um, a challenge. And uh, we understand 87.7 million rand has been allocated uh, through the province's uh, project preparation facility to provide uh, funding uh, for integrated uh, social housing projects. When um, can we expect uh, that project to uh, get off the ground and in fact start to see um, adequate and proper housing uh, uh, being given to people. I mean, you know, what we saw in Langa is a clear sign that, that people are not being housed uh, uh, properly. Well, if I may use your, your Langa example, remember phase 3B of Langa was supposed to happen and the land was invaded. Yeah. Obviously, that is now mushroomed into more than one informal settlement along that specific corridor. So I don't think it's fair to say, you know, that we are not adequately addressing the housing issue. It is once this, this land is invaded, then it actually derails or prolongs the intentions of the provincial government, but also the local government and the national government. In terms of social housing, we have got various projects that are actually at implementation phase, which over the next three to five years will yield between 3,600 to 5,000 social housing opportunities. In terms of low-cost housing or BNG, which is different to, to social housing, you know, we are, just for this financial year, going to yield approximately well over 11,000 housing opportunities, given the limited budget which we get through the Housing Settlement Development Grant from the National Department. So as a province and as a provincial department of human settlements, we are focusing on our innovation and through focusing on affordable housing, we can expand and accelerate the delivery of housing opportunities because, remember, Part of our backlog is individuals that earn more than three and a half thousand rand, which we now need to also cater for and expand in, in terms of affordable housing in that regard as well. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. My question is a little bit unfair in terms of you not addressing uh, the issue. And on the back of that, and I'm going to continue talking about uh, Langa because the DA Federal uh, Council Chair, uh, Helen Zilla, made uh, some comments about the fact that being poor in Langa was better than being poor anywhere else in, in, in other uh, townships, is, is what she said. Are you sharing a similar view there? First and foremost, um, you know, I can't uh, comment on what uh, Alan Zilla said, you know, you have to engage she, her on what she, she means she, she's by that. Leader, but what I can tell you yeah. is that as a provincial government, since 2009, 
the provision of basic services and the money that we've allocated annually through local government and also through the provincial uh, government has seen our delivery of basic services to informal settlements being even above what the national expects from a provincial government and from a local government. So the quality of lives of our residents in informal areas is way above the national norms and standards. And in that regard, if you live in an informal settlement area within the Western Cape, you are sure that you will have access to, to uh, water, you will have access to adequate water provision, sometimes above and beyond what the national guidelines is actually expecting of a provincial government. But in terms of our own provincial budget, there's the ISUPG grant, which for this new financial year, which we are already in, we, are, we have earmarked 15 formal settlements across the Western Cape, the bulk of them in the so, Western Cape. So, so you're uh, saying that people are, comfortable, are people are comfortable in their, in, in, in their poverty and in their circumstances, what you're saying, uh, more or less, in, in, in Langa, for example. So, so, so you've made them comfortable in their circumstance. Ma'am, what you need to understand, in terms of what is expected of the provincial government and the local government, SWEA, to provide services to informal settlements, the, our standards are way above what the national expects of us. So we ensure that we provide a, a decent level of service for those that live in informality. If you compare us to other provinces, you will find that we are way, head and shoulders above any other province. Okay. Um, there's been some changes, of course, uh, as we know, the Western Cape uh, MEC for Education, uh, Debbie Schaefer, um, who's been in the position uh, for eight years, is taking up a position in, in, in the UK and, of course, has now been replaced by MEC uh, David Maney. Who, and and do, do you believe uh, that the, the changes that are being made are indeed progressive and that they will indeed, uh, you know, move things uh, forward within uh, the DN? Of course, I, I would assume that some of these changes were based on the fact that uh, the Western Cape MEC um, has MEC for Education has uh, had to take up another opportunity. Well, all of the changes announced by our Premier today, but also the two new additions, which he also announced to the media, you know, as the Democratic Alliance, and I'm speaking now in my role as the provincial leader of the Western Cape, yeah. I welcome it. It's progressive. It's forward thinking, because as a province, we are now focusing on moving forward in a post-COVID-19 reality, and this is to continue with our momentum that we as a cabinet have seen, and as a Democratic Alliance Western Cape, we applaud the changes which the Premier has done to ensure that we keep on delivering and to show that we keep on getting things done, even under difficult circumstances. All right. Uh, thanks very much for speaking to us. Once again, congratulations on your new uh, position there, Tertius uh, Simmers. Thank you. All right. That is uh, the newly appointed infrastructure uh, MEC in uh, the Western